CataractCoach.com, ultra-dense black cataract. Here's an expert splitting technique using a sharp edge chopper. Our guest surgeon here is Dr. Neto Rossitelli from Brazil, a fantastic surgeon. We featured his videos here before. Always a pleasure to learn from him. Diamond keratome being used to make the main incision. There's the side port as well. And you can see what a minimal red reflex. So tripan blue dye going in. And now you can fill up the eye with our dispersive viscoelastic. Really, really tough to see here. Now he's going to make a capsorexis. Again, you probably already know the saying, do not make a baby capsorexis. And with an expert like Dr. Rossitelli, you don't have to worry. It's going to be a sufficiently large rexus here. Really hard to visualize here, uh, but you can certainly see the edge of it as it's coming along. And you'll notice it's going to be a nice, generous capsular axis. That's important. With a very dense nucleus like this, you need to have the room to get it out of the capsular bag. So you want to make a sufficiently large capsular axis, at least 5 millimeters in diameter. 5.5 would be just about perfect, and I think that's what we've achieved here. Now be cautious on the hydro dissection because you're not going to be able to see a fluid wave. It's just such an opaque lens, there's really not much of a fluid wave. Now more hydro, uh, more viscous going inside the eye. Here comes a chopper or even just a hook to help hold the nucleus. So the hook is there to hold the nucleus in place, and here's a sharp edge chopper. That's that Jacobovitz chopper. And you'll see it'll be placed sub-incisionally and then pushed towards the other instrument that's in the eye. And it's going to basically actively and sharply slice and break this nucleus into two halves. So there it is, and you have to have the correct balance so these two instruments can come together. And then you can see once you've done that, now it can be pulled apart, and you'll be able to split this nucleus. So this requires a lot of force. You can't just use the 500 millimeters of mercury of holding power from the FACO probe. No, you actually are trapping the nucleus between the hook in the left hand and this sharp chopper in the right hand. And notice this sharp chopper, the leading edge of it's sharp. Viscoelastic is your friend here, more viscoelastic going inside the eye. Look just how absolutely opaque this lens is. Now again, rotated 90 degrees. Ch this hook is going around the lens equator to hold the nucleus so it does not move. And now this sharp front edge of the chopper is going to be used here, pushed inwards and together, and that will help split the nucleus and Pow, look at that. Wow, nicely done. Now, these types of cataracts tend to be very dense and fibrous, almost leathery, and sometimes it's hard to even split them. And so I like the idea behind this sharp chopper. And we've shown similar videos in the past year. And look at that, more viscoelastic. So it's really a smart move here to use plenty of viscoelastic because that keeps the AC maintained here. And so now, again, placing that hook around the lens equator, holding the nucleus still, and then careful balance, and a tremendous amount of pressure is being placed here. It really is a lot more pressure than you may think. You have to have really great control here, because if you don't have great balance in doing this, you may have rotation or slip of the nucleus. So now that you have four quadrants, each quadrant can be removed. So now switching over to a different chopper, and so rotating this around here, looks like the pieces are nicely freed up. You have four big dense pieces here. Now, if you're not so skilled in this and you're more of a beginning surgeon, you know what? This case would be great for MSICS, manual small incision cataract surgery, where you extract the nucleus whole. So here we go. Wow, look at that density, chopping it in half. So that quadrant now becomes two eighths and split those apart and those can be removed. You're going to end up using a lot of phaco power on this side. To get these pieces emulsified, it's a lot of phaco power. So recoding the endothelium is important. Also, being careful to float in the incision. Look at the position of the phaco needle, the metal needle within the silicon sleeve. Notice how it's in the middle, how it floats there in the middle very nicely. Again, now more viscoelastic going inside the eye, inflating the capsule bag, giving you some room to work, also recoding the endothelium. And now as you actively remove the cataract pieces, bringing it forward, you can try chop it more in s smaller sub-pieces and then emulsify this down. Even then, you see, it doesn't want to really split. So probably the easier part here is just to buzz through it with a lot more phaco energy. Use phaco power modulation so you can help minimize the energy in that regard. Probably using a pulse mode here, maybe a duty cycle of 50% or so. 
And slowly but surely, you can remove this nucleus. And But notice, again, how many times he's recoded the endothelium and filled the eye with this glastic. Looks like a 25-gauge cannula. It's probably HPMC, hydroxypropyl methylcellulose, is my guess. And, you know, that's okay to use a couple of syringes worth. It's worth it. Viscoelastic, you know, is cheaper than vitreous, but viscoelastic is also cheaper than corn endothelial cells. And so take your time here, use whatever supplies you need, and remove this cataract slowly and surely. And with an expert surgeon like Dr. Rosatelli, who's done tens of thousands of cases, I wouldn't be surprised if he's coming on 100,000 cases at this point. I mean, that he's a very prolific surgeon. But even then, he's taking his time. There's no rush here. So learn from this. We're showing you the video a little bit edited, as you can imagine. But this is at least taking him twice as long as his routine case. So now, cataracts out of the eye, look at that smart move, making sure there are no chunks of nucleus or small fragments hidden under the iris because this is not the best dilation. That is a great move. That is something you learn the hard way, and he's done a beautiful job of that. So no more retained pieces because the pupil wants to come down. And again, using the, the chopper to help lift up the iris to give you better visualization while the IA probe helps remove all the cortex. Can you imagine how incredibly happy this patient is going to be? Pre-op acuity, I'm sure it was maybe hand motion, probably even light perception. And this patient's finally going to get some light on that retina. That macula is going to be so happy to finally be working again, finally be receiving some light signals. So nice cleanup here at the end. Looks beautiful. Probably time to put our lens in. I'm guessing a single piece acrylic lens. Let's see, let's see what we got here. Monofocal lens. And cleaned up very nicely. Yeah, so you will, you will occasionally experience these types of cases. You can certainly, if you're an experienced surgeon, do it this way with this chop technique and the sharp chopper. You can use um, a pre-chopper if you want. You can do any technique you like. But if you are on the beginning part of the learning curve, really consider doing this as an MSICS procedure. It'll be a lot safer in your hands and it'll be a lot faster. At the end of the case, there's that single piece of critical lens implanted with hydro implantation so there's no viscoelastic left in the eye. Getting a good wash out of the anterior chamber here and sealing up the incisions. Patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. Thanks for watching and thank you, Dr. Rosatelli. Always a pleasure to learn from your videos. And if you're not already, check out his YouTube channel. He has some amazing videos from which you can learn.